Hello everyone and welcome back to another NapTech tutorial. In this video we are going to be taking a look at Apple's spreadsheet creation app Numbers for iOS. I'm going to be using it on an iPad today and we are going to be learning all the basic features as well as some kind of advanced tips and tricks for you to get started and master Numbers for iOS. Alright, so let's start with the splash screen. Now the splash screen is the first screen you'll see when you launch the app from the home page. And as you can see, this is it. It's broken down into three very simple parts. We have our main body here where we have our previously opened documents or documents that are on our iCloud drive. So the iCloud drive is pretty much that area that is synced in the cloud across all your Apple devices that are using the same Apple ID. So that can be an iPhone, an iPad, or a Mac as long as it has numbers. And on the top left here, here we have locations. Now this is where we can open a document that's somewhere on our iCloud Drive or our WebDAV account. And on the top right we have three options. The create a new document options which is like this plus icon. The share options to share a document and the edit option to edit a spreadsheet. Let's go ahead and create a new document for this video. Now as you can see, once I click on create a new spreadsheet, I get this choose a template page. Now these templates are completely free and they're professionally designed by Apple. So if you don't have time to create a document from scratch, you can go ahead and choose one of these very beautiful professionally designed templates to get started. Now just for the sake of this video, we're going to be choosing one by random, this one for example. Now this is the document editing page. This is pretty much how it will look no matter what document you have, so if it's the same template or not. Now let's get started with how to use numbers to edit your document. Alright, so let's go ahead and start with one of the most simple yet important features of numbers for iOS, and that is zooming in and out. Zooming in and out is very simple, it's just like zooming into a photo. You take your two fingers and you pinch in or out to zoom in or out. And now this is great if you want a bird's eye view of your document or if you want to see what it would look like in print. Alright, so now let's get into something, again, very simple but very important. Now whether you use Excel usually or numbers on a Mac, it's always the same with spreadsheet editing softwares. With one spreadsheet file, we can have different sheets. Now sheets are represented here with tabs on the top here on top of your document. And to create a new sheet, all you have to do is click on that plus right here and click on new sheet. Now as you can see, once a new sheet is created, there will be a table that will be added to it automatically. But if you want to remove it, all you have to do is click on that circle in the top left of your table right here and go ahead and click on delete. Okay, now we have a blank sheet. If we want to add content to our document and whether that be in a blank sheet or in the sheet we were in right now, all we have to do is go ahead and click on the plus that's right here in the top right. Now, this plus sort of menu will allow us to add content to our document. And as you can see, there's a lot of content we can add. We have tables here, which is a set of pre-made tables. So you can choose one and then modify it to your needs. So if you want to make it bigger, smaller, you could just use these toggle options right here. You can click on the circle we clicked on before to change some other things in the table and so on and so forth. Now that's it for tables. If we want to add charts, again, we have different options, 2D, 3D, and interactive. 2D charts are, as the name indicates them, 2D charts. So they're a fun way to show statistics, to show numbers, to show growth, to, to show different aspects of your document. They can also be linked to cells, so the value that are in the cells are represented graphically using these graphics. Now the same goes to 3D uh, charts which are pretty much the same shapes, just represented in a more 3D sort of way. Finally, we have interactive charts, which are great if you are going to be opening your spreadsheet on another iOS device, or on a Mac, or on an iPhone. And these, of course, only work on a device, so they don't work if you go ahead and print the spreadsheet, but they will still be there, they just won't be interactive. So these are great if you have some dynamic values you want to represent in a graphical chart. So again, just to add them, click on anyone you find good, and here it is. Now with all charts, whether they are 2D, 3D, or interactive, we have to add data to the chart. And you could link that to a table that already has numerical data and you want to represent that, or you can go ahead and tap to add data to a chart. 
All right, so as you can see here, to link it to a table, all you have to do is drag that to the table. Drag the chart to the table and it's linked with the numerical values that were in that table. If we do not have a table or if the table doesn't have numbers as it does not here, we could just tap on the chart again and add data ranges. All right, and that is pretty much it for graphs and charts. To add uh, a shape, you go ahead and go back to that sort of plus menu, go ahead and click on shapes, and we have a bunch of shapes that are pre-made. Now these are new to uh, Apple's iWork Suite new, newest update that goes for iOS and Mac. So we have these icons that look great and you could change the color of these once they're inserted. So let's go ahead and search for a uh, pen, for example. All right, we click on that and as you can see, it's inserted into our document. We can make it bigger or smaller using the toggles on the sides. So to change the color of a shape, table, or chart, and that's pretty much what we call style in numbers, you just click on the object you want to modify and go up to this paintbrush menu on the top right. That will open up a menu called style. So simply select any of these pre-made styles to change the color of your uh, shape or table, or you can go ahead and select them yourself and make this sort of custom fill using colors and again, pre-made gradients. We also have some other options like a shadow you could add, and again, different pre-made shadows, a reflection we could add with, some, with a slider to you know detail what exact reflection you're looking for. Opacity can be edited from here as well, and we could add some text into our shape using this as well. Now that's pretty much it for shapes. If you do want to add images to your document, all you have to do is go ahead and click on that plus again and navigate to the image section of that menu. All right, so let me show you how to use the style menu now. Now the style menu is the menu you get when you click on that paintbrush on the top right here, and it depends on what object is selected. So for images, for instance, you get these sort of borders, these pre-made borders you can select from. So they're pre-made styles that are automatically applied to your image. We also have different options here. I won't go into them because they're fairly clearly indicated, but note that you do have some different options here as well as arrange. So arrange is pretty much the menu that stays the same no matter what object is selected. It's to move it back to, to the back or to the, to the front, flip it vertically, horizontally, or to lock the object. So for text, the style menu is different. Once you click on that, you can change the font. You can have you can turn the text into bold, italic, or underline, strike through. You can change the size, color, and so on and so forth. So really basic and advanced text options. Again, the arrange is still there to move it to the back or to the front. All right, to finish off, let's take a look at how to save a document. To do so, go to the top right and click on the three dots right here. From here, you'll be able to do multiple things. Now we're gonna focus on two things mostly. Collaborate with others and send a copy. Collaborate with others would let you send your document by email to somebody else that has an Apple ID, has numbers installed on an Apple device, and that is signed in. This way, you could both edit your documents and see the changes that were made from one another in real time. This uh, is a new feature by Apple in its newest update to its iWork software. Uh, it works on both iOS and Macs, so you could be uh, syncing from both devices, so that's great. Uh, send a copy would allow you to save your file and send it through email or through other apps you have installed on your iPad. This is just like any other share menu that is in another app on your iPad, so you should be pretty familiar to that if you've already sent photos or other sort of documents or files from your iPad. Uh, now, the good thing about iOS, uh, numbers for iOS, is that it will let you send the file as a PDF and as a numbers file. So if you have somebody that does not have uh, spreadsheet software, so spreadsheet editing software installed, or that does not have uh, numbers installed, you could just send them a PDF and they'll still be able to view the document on their device, whether they have the software or not. Print would allow you to air print uh, the document from your iPad directly uh, using Wi-Fi to your air printer. 
All right, and that is pretty much it for how to use numbers on iOS. I hope this video helped you out, and if it did, please leave a like. It really helps us out. And if you have any questions, you could just leave them in the comment section below. We'll try our best to reply as soon as we can. Uh, if not, please subscribe to keep notified about all our new videos. We do tutorials for Mac, Windows, and iOS like this one right here. If you have any suggestions about tutorials you'd want to see, Go ahead and leave them in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. And that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and comment. And see you next time in another NAPTEC tutorial.